Africa Federation, along with Georgetown University's Global Social Enterprise and the McDonough School of Business, announced a multi-year partnership to help strengthen rural communities. We call this the Rural Entrepreneurship Initiative, or REI, and this collaboration aims to help rural entrepreneurs address the unique challenges that they face. You know, we believe strongly that bolstering economic growth through entrepreneurship strengthens and benefits everyone, and that this is really important for rural America. Thank you for joining us on today's webinar. This is the first of a five-part series of webinars that we're offering through the Rural Entrepreneurship Initiative. This afternoon, we'll talk more about the partnership and the assets that we'll be offering, educational tools, and incentives like the Rural Entrepreneurship Challenge. Uh, the mission of the REI is to strengthen rural America by supporting rural entrepreneurs and their ventures and shining a bright spotlight on the great work that's going on across the country. And today's webinar is geared specifically to the Farm Bureau staff and volunteer leaders. We want to orient you to REI, its mission, and its key activities. And uh, we hope that you will be active in your communities to get rural entrepreneurs involved in this program. Uh, so as we get this program, this webinar kicked off, we'd love to ask you, uh, all those of you attending the webinar, to answer a poll question for us. There should be a box appearing on your screen that gives you a chance to answer the question that you see on the screen. Now tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, are you an entrepreneur or business owner? Are you a farmer? Are you a Farm Bureau staff or volunteer leader? Uh, are you a service provider? Are you a community leader? Uh, please just take a moment to check one of those boxes. We'll let everybody uh, see the results in just a few minutes. And uh, and one other kind of housekeeping item as we get this program rolling, if you do have a question at any point, feel free to type it into the chat feature on the GoToWebinar uh, box on your screen. And uh, we'll get to questions at the end of the webinar, but feel free to, to type them in at any point where you'd like to ask them. With, at this point, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, April Bonds is an alumnus of the Georgetown McDonough School of Business. She is operations and market strategist for Bonds Ranch, a very large ranch in Saginaw, Texas, and, uh, and she has grown up in a Farm Bureau family. Uh, so, April, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Great. It's always a pleasure to get to be able to participate, not only in something that is uh, part of my daily life, but also uh, get to tie it back to Georgetown a little bit, too. Excellent. Well, would you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and your father as an entrepreneur in rural America? Absolutely. Um, we, we are, when I was thinking about what to tell you guys about my history, I started thinking back in, in, into it and I went, wow, there's just so many um, rural scenarios in which I could tell you, regard, whether it be from my mother's side of my family or my father's, because my, my mother's side of the family were, were small stakeholder farmers in South Georgia. But uh, I'm here as a representative of Bonds Ranch. Bonds Ranch was started in 1933 by my grandfather. It was never supposed to be a um, business entity. It was some place for him to put some cash because he was an entrepreneur himself. And in 1933, he had some cash. But when he died, when my, grand when, when my father was two, um, he left the ranch to my father. And my father started taking on business aspects of it as early as when he was 16. And when he was around his mid-20s, he started realizing that the 400 herd, Hereford operation that he had, cow-calf operation that he had inherited, would not be enough to provide for his family. And so he started realizing that he needed to change the way he did some things and not only go into some different business aspects of the, of the beef industry, but also change how he was financially looking at things. And just it just changed his overall life. And... Since then, we are now, Bonds Ranch is a cow-calf stalker and feeding operation. We're headquartered in Saginaw, Texas, which is just north of Fort Worth. But we operate in 28 counties in the state of Texas, as well as 10 states in the United States, as well as in Canada. And we have even run some cattle in Mexico. So we, uh, that, as my dad likes to say, he had that idea in his mid-20s of what he wanted to do and how he wanted to grow. and. Uh, he calls it throwing a snowball off of Mount Everest because it most definitely did grow. 
he um, was constantly having to reinvent himself. As the markets changed, as technologies changed, he had to keep looking at what, he was, what was going on around him. One of the reasons why he changed his mindset was just simply because he realized without land and without the access to capital, it was going to be difficult for him to grow in the same manner in which he was accustomed to. And so he had to start thinking outside the box. He also had to look in the community and the environment around him. What was going on in the beef industry? And one of our biggest growth areas actually came um, when uh, about 10 years ago, he realized he knew nothing about technology. And uh, my sister had just come on board. And she did know something about technology. And so she could possibly help us get into, start producing calves that could be exported, uh, qualify for exportation into the uh, European market. And so we have constantly been trying to go through different stages of, of growth. But it does present itself with unique challenges because a lot of times, you know, is it worth taking the risk? It's always worrisome. Do I risk this capital? Do I risk this what I'm doing now, what I know works, and try something new? Um, is everybody going to think I'm crazy? Because my father has most definitely been called crazy multiple times in his life. Uh, and even today, certain leaders in the industry would still probably call him crazy because nobody else could 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 do what he does. But uh, we are very very diligent in our in our business aspects of things, and that's one of the things that's made us so so successful. Well, that's great. You're right. Sometimes people think entrepreneurs are crazy, but that's one of the things that makes them successful too. Well, and I know that you travel around to a lot of rural communities as part of your job and and just part of your life. And what are some opportunities that you see for entrepreneurs in rural communities to create businesses? Well, I, I most definitely do travel around quite a little bit. I uh, am actually just shoved my dad out the door. He's getting ready to go do about a four-state tour of ranches. Um, and uh, we, uh, so he's, he's, he's trying to get out the door to, to, to go see those ranches. But it's, in each community that we go into, we are seeing the same thing. We're seeing um, that a, a lot of the young people that are within these communities, they're starting to leave because for, generation, for a couple of generations now, we've heard that there's no opportunities in ag and there's no opportunities in these rural communities, and so people are starting to leave. So the people that are left are having to are get, are, we're having to get creative with what we're doing because how do we bring my generation back? because they do know this is a great place to live. And they, but they also have some challenges within these communities on how to get people to come back into their communities. And so I think what we're going to start to see is actually some the resolution of some of these community-wide issues through entrepreneurs. How do we solve um, the water problems that are going on around us? You know, I'm, 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 I'm from Texas, and all of us that are involved in ag we are daily concerned with whether there's too much or too little water. It's going to be the rural entrepreneurs that are going to find the solution to how do we help communities like Wichita Falls, Texas, that have 45 days with worth of water left, how do we help them have a, a sustainable water system around them so that the farmers and ranchers who live around them have access to water, the uh, urban communities that are dependent on the water from the lakes and the reservoirs that are around Wichita Falls, and also the people living in Wichita Falls have a consistent water supply. We're also starting to see how rural people who are communicating about their rural way of life, using technology through blogs, through Twitter, through other sources like that, are beginning to communicate not only their way of life. And for a lot of people, like Reed Drummond, uh, many who know her as the pioneer woman, her blog literally started just as a way to talk about what she was doing within, her, within her, her family. And now it has turned into a successful business. So I think we're going to really start to see people finding ways to generate money from and profit from resolving the community issue, but then also taking the rural issues that we have and communicating them to a larger public. Yep, some good insight. Uh, and when we think about entrepreneurs in particular in rural America, do you think that these rural entrepreneurs have been recognized and supported in the way that they should be? Are there, are there opportunities or are they plugged into the training and technical assistance and financing that, uh, that would be helpful for them? 
Well, I'm a little negative on this subject because I would say absolutely not. And on many fronts, I would say that rural entrepreneurs just in general, we haven't been recognized. Um, I can tell you that even during my time in Georgetown, when I initially started talking with many of my classmates, most of whom were from rural, urban areas, and I would, I would very distinctly remember a story about a, uh, we were sitting in a marketing class and we were talking about what it was like for me growing up in a small community and a jack-in-the-box open for the first time. And the community, the wonderful party and community, community spirit that was built around, we have a jack-in-the-box, that somebody opened up a jack-in-the-box franchise. And everybody in the room looked at me with this dumbfounded look on their face. They didn't understand why that was such a big deal. And little did they know that the, part of the reason why another fast food place had never come in was because there was an extremely successful local uh, fast food chain that is now spreading throughout the um, most of Texas and is extremely successful. It has a better profitability rate than most McDonald's even do uh, as a part of, as an investment. And poor old Taco Casa does not get the recognition that it gets in comparison to the big, wonderful jack-in-the-box coming to town. Um, they, their successes seem little in comparison. And I even think to what, until I started talking about the numbers and the capital investment that was required for us to do the farming and ranching that we do within our operation, it wasn't until I actually sat down and started explaining the numbers by which we operate did my classmates fully understand, whoa, this is a legitimate business. But what also has happened as we are getting more set into our ways is that we're, we're not using the innovative tools of education um, to keep improving ourselves. That's one of the things that I, I really love about uh, my family business is that education and constantly improving not only what we know, but trying to find new ways of doing things. We are constantly absorbing information. Um, you know, the example of my dad when we started entering into the, e the European market, we didn't have the training. We didn't have the technical skills. We didn't know what all was involved with it. And a lot of other people that were in our community did not want to initially enter into it because they didn't understand it. Well, we entered into it because my sister, that was her first job within the company when she came back. All of her time was dedicated towards learning that. But I also then think back to um, some of the resources that are available through the USDA, through Farm Bureau, in order to help educate people. And I, I revert back to my grandmother in, in, south, in southwest Georgia. My grandmother actually was able to purchase her farm in the 1940s because she had worked um, in a USDA office and had learned about the programs that were available to small rural producers to help them be able to buy land and to diversify crop production on their land so that they could be productive in the future. And my grandmother and grandfather were actually able to purchase their their farm back in the 1940s because of these programs that were available. Now, I'm not saying everybody should go and work in a USDA office, but that's why webinars such as this and programs such as the REI are so great because it helps disseminate that information out to the community so that they can take advantage of those programs that have been tweaked a little bit, but that are still out there for available for people. Well, that's great. I know those those stories about those companies, whether it's Taco Casa or, or whatever it might be, are, are stories that we want to make sure that uh, they get told more and more often. Uh, and you know, when you first heard about this initiative, I know you reached out to us to, to express your interest and, and to learn more about it. What do you think the potential is for the Rural Entrepreneurship Initiative? And how uh, and what role do you think Farm Bureau can have as an advocate for rural entrepreneurs? Well, I remember very distinctly the day I got the email uh, from my, my Georgetown alumni newsletter about this program. And I told it to my father. And uh, he was actually in the hospital at the time with pneumonia. And he looked at me and he said, I don't care what you have to do, but you need to be a part of this because this is so important. 
And I absolutely agree with him because the potential with this initiative to be able to reach people, not only to give them hope that the chances that they're wanting to take, that they can take them, and to highlight the success stories because the ability of Farm Bureau to reach a large, wide population of people who are in the rural communities. Essentially, Farm Bureau is acting as the, the USDA office that my grandmother worked in back in the 1940s to help teach people. Um, I remember, Jeff, in, in all of my discussions with you and, and all the entre great entrepreneurs that we were able to have um, touch points with back in school, uh, a phrase that was used all the time was called whiteboarding. And to explain to everybody out there, whiteboarding is essentially where you get a group of people together and you sit and you talk about ideas. Here's a possible business idea that I have. What would make this idea work? What wouldn't make this idea work? What are some of the challenges that we're going to face? How would you maybe go about starting up this, this kind of business? And Farm Bureau's involvement in this allows you to be able to do that. Um, I remember when I was sitting and talking with my dad about this, when we were in the hospital and and talking with him, he had a friend who actually came by to see him. And it was so funny because they actually started talking about just this and how important this quote act of quote unquote whiteboarding actually is because um, he and Weldon started talking about how, many, how often they would just sit and usually over a case of beer or a bottle of whiskey or something like that, but they would sit and they would just talk amongst themselves. And they would talk about these crazy ideas that they had on how to how, how to go about putting a different lot of cattle into a feed yard and what would make it work. And then they would take that idea and they would take it to usually somebody of an older generation and see what that person of an older generation thought of it. What were some of the kickbacks they had? But then they would then also then take it to their other, the other people who were in the industry. And essentially what the Rural Entrepreneurship Initiative does is it creates that network of people to allow rural entrepreneurs to be able to talk to other people who are interested in these ideas, possibly even having the same ideas, and connect them and allow them to whiteboard with each other, um, whether it be through telephone, whether it be through the Farm Bureau conventions, whether it be through the REI events as well, but it helps put these people together so that they can talk and communicate more. Well, that's great. That's, that is exactly what we're trying to do is help help uh, shine a big spotlight on people that are already doing interesting things, help them access a great deal of resources, and, uh, and help them connect with each other in lots of ways. So, April, thanks so much for your insights and, uh, and the stories you've shared. And uh, we really appreciate you being a part of the webinar. Hold on tight. We might have some questions for you during the Q&A period a little bit later. Sounds uh, great. Thanks so much. Really appreciate being a part of today. Thanks, April. Um, so at this point, we'd like to just show the results of the, uh, the earlier poll. You know, the, uh, our audience asked, was asked to um, respond to this question about, about themselves, and uh, we'd kind of like to see what the results are, just so everybody will know who else is on the webinar. It looks like we've got a lot of entrepreneurs out there and a lot of Farm Bureau folks, uh, good, a good mix of people. So we really appreciate everybody being a part of the webinar today, and uh, we hope you'll help us spread the word as we continue to, um, to build out this program. All right, so with that, I'd like to actually ask another poll question. So if our audience wouldn't mind telling us about the challenges you see in your community for entrepreneurs. You know, April referred to a few of these while she was talking, um, but for our audience, tell us, you know, what do you think the biggest challenge is in your community? And we'll give you a, give you a few seconds to, uh, to respond to that one. All right, so I think the poll question is going to be coming up here in just a minute. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll let the poll question pop up here in a second, and, uh, and you can respond to it when it does come up. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is Dan Durheim. Dan is the Executive Director of Industry Affairs for the American Farm Bureau Federation. 
Uh, Dan, we'll talk a little bit about why we launched the Rural Entrepreneurship Initiative and, uh, and the major activities that you can expect coming up for the next three mo few months up and through the January 2015 Farm Bureau Convention. Uh, so, Dan, away. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, April. What a great uh, young lady that's moving in the world of entrepreneurism. Um, and as you've heard from April, Farm Bureau really has a unique opportunity to encourage and foster the entrepreneurial spirit among our farmers and ranchers today. We have learned that farmers and ranchers look to Farm Bureau for resource, direction, and professional development. At our very core, the Farm Bureau is a program-based, solutions-oriented organization. We understand there are lots of opportunities to engage with rural America. Now with this initiative, we can stay true to our core and lead by building and empowering an even stronger entrepreneurial culture among Farm Bureau members and rural Americans. The REI partnership is with Georgetown University's Global Social Enterprise Initiative and the Georgetown Entrepreneurship Initiative. We are proud to have invested with a leader in the world of entrepreneurialism. We are expecting even greater results. When you ask farmers the question, are you an entrepreneur, they often say to us, yes. And we agree, farmers are the country's original entrepreneurs. REI is dedicated to giving these entrepreneurs and other leaders in rural communities nationwide both a forum and the practical means to bring ideas to fruition. Rural development has really been picking up a lot of steam for the American Farm Bureau, and the REI project will be an ongoing endeavor. We are just beginning, and with your input, we will build this to be an ongoing value to you, to Farm Bureau members, and to rural communities. We have every intention of counting, sorry, continuing REI beyond the first year, and we are actively securing the necessary resources to continue to move that forward. I'm excited to talk to you today more detailed about the key elements of our first year. In our first year, the REI project includes three elements. The Strong Rural America website just launched last week. If you haven't checked it out, you can find it at www.strongruralamerica.com or you can leave the W's off, right? Just strongruralamerica.com. An educational webinar series that will feature five webinars of which you're on the first one. The first ever National Rural Entrepreneurship Challenge whose winners will be honored at the AFBF Annual Convention in January 2015 including our very own Farm Bureau Entrepreneur of the Year Award. We created StrongRuralAmerica.com as the hub for you and entrepreneurs in rural communities to plug into the activities and resources of REI. Content will continue to be uploaded, but as you can see already, there are many ways to connect with Farm Bureau, you can find more information about the challenge and a plethora of other information and resources about entrepreneurism. The educational series begins with webinars geared primarily towards rural entrepreneurs and those wanting to start a business. These topics relate to researching your business idea, telling your story, raising capital, and growing your team. These will all be held on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, which of course is 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain and noon Pacific. And they are all free of charge. The only small task is that we ask people to register so that we can continue to build our resource base of those that are interested in this and we can continue to communicate. Please feel free to share this slate with everyone in your networks who can benefit from this information. Each webinar will be about an hour and will feature expert speakers and leave time for questions and answers. The best part about my job is announcing the Farm Bureau Rural Entrepreneurship Challenge. You may have seen many startup competitions focused on business development and startup businesses. But to our knowledge, no one has focused specifically on the ingenuity of rural people until now. The Farm Bureau Rural Entrepreneurship Challenge is open to any Farm Bureau member living in a non-metro area who has a great business idea as a startup or an existing business. It does not have to be an agricultural business. If the person is not already a Farm Bureau member, here is your opportunity to sign them up and they can join as a part of the application. I'm pleased to tell you that the challenge is officially open and accepting 
applications. The deadline for registration is September the 8th, and deadlines for submissions is September the 15th. Ten semifinalists will be announced on October 14th at the Rural Entrepreneurship Summit, co-hosted by the Amiro, Georgetown University, and the United States Department of Agriculture. Through a series of live interviews, four finalists will be identified. These four will make their pitches to a panel of judges at the American Farm Bureau Annual Convention in San Diego on January 11th. The best part about the challenge is that the four finalists receive $15,000 in cash prizes and are competing for an additional $15,000 grand prize at the convention. We will also offer a People's Choice Award of $10,000. I want to encourage everyone in the Farm Bureau Network to spread the word to those rural entrepreneurs who, thought, who you thought of earlier in the program. Spread the word about the website, the webinars, and the challenge. Your stewardship is critical to the, to the success of our efforts. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank those people from Georgetown and others that are a part of this. I think you're going to see their faces later on uh, in the presentation, but special thanks to Jeff and LaDon for helping get this thing moving as we've moved through the process. It's kind of been very interesting for us to look at entrepreneurism very differently than we have in, in the past. And what's even greater is that we're also attaching and adding value to people like April who are already part of the ranks of Farm Bureau and as we look at how we redefine our strength in rural America. So of course, I look forward to seeing all of you at the convention in January. And for those of you that are going to be submitting, best of luck and we look forward to hearing from you. Jeff? Back to you. Thanks so much, Dan. We appreciate this very much. I hope that, uh, that our audience today is as excited about the program as we are. Uh, and at this point, we'd love to open up for questions from the audience. So once again, if you do have any questions that we can help you answer about the initiative, um, please start typing those into the chat box, and we'll have those. Uh, we'll answer them as, as best we can. Um, partners out there to help us with this initiative. We know that there are a lot of great entrepreneurs already in rural America. We also know there are a lot of organizations who are helping those entrepreneurs, and there are people, whether it's part of the Farm Bureau Network or, or other organizations, who, who are helping entrepreneurs and helping them connect to resources like this. We're, we're hoping this webinar will help, um, help you, help inspire you, and help uh, arm you with the information you need to, to help connect those entrepreneurs in rural America with our programs. Um, so I do have, it uh, looks like we got some questions coming in from the audience. April, I got, I've got one for you about, uh, specifically about young people. You know, I think one of the things that you had mentioned here and something that we often read about is, is uh, that young people think there are no opportunities in rural America. You know, why, do, why do you think it is that young people kind of feel down on rural America? You know, I, we, I was actually at a convention on um, agriculture in South Africa uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the same exact question was, came up on the scale of Africa. And, but then we started, the people in the room, the young leaders who were in the room, we started talking and we realized that everybody, each from their different home country, had the exact same problem. And I have to even say my parents were even guilty of this. Part of it has to come, I think, from we have for many years now and for about two generations, um, especially it started with my grandparents' generation of saying, you know, this is a really hard way of life, especially those who are farmers and ranchers. It's you work long hours um, and sometimes the pay has not been all that great. And so they have discouraged their kids from going into it. And so they said, you know what, kids, I want you to go out into the, um, go to the city, get the best education you can there. And that's one of the reasons why now, as a, as a rancher, we're having such a disconnect between our consumer, our eventual consumer, who is the American public, and communicating um, food issues to them because there is now, for two generations, they've been removed from the farm and ranch and from these rural communities. So my parents were very guilty of it, too, that any time I did something wrong as a child, my punishment was also to have to do the most back-grinding, awful job on the ranch. 
I'm sure many of you have probably can understand that and have probably done that with your own children. At my house, it was if you broke curfew, you had to go build a front fence or you had to go dig out rocks out of our front lot, which considering we sit six inches below, uh, above a limestone, it was never a fun task. It, we need to change how we communicate with this younger generation that, you know what, this is a great way of life. That yes, you'll work long hours, but it's one of the most rewarding and enjoyable jobs that you'll ever do. If you talk to anybody who's living out in rural America, they love their life. They love raising their kids in this environment. They love the work ethic that they are instilling in their children. I have so many friends who grew up in rural communities that they went to the city for a few years, worked, had great, wonderful jobs, and are now coming back home to rural America. And they're doing that because they finally saw, you know what, there's so much more uh, to the way of life that I want to live, and there are opportunities out there. It maybe is that I just have to get creative with how I'm going about uh, making opportunities. The other thing is the same problem that my dad had when he was uh, when he was younger. That it's it is difficult for people who don't have a proven track record to uh, go to a bank and prove their financial security. Um, and being able to take on certain endeavors. And I think there's a lot of information that you will probably see in, in one of these webinars about one of the best ways to go about um, going to a bank and being able to talk about uh, uh, assuring the financial resources that are necessary to be able to take on some of these endeavors. That's great. Thank you, April. All right. So we've got a, another question. We actually had a few questions. More uh, people are interested in more about the uh, rural innovation challenge, the Rural Entrepreneurship Challenge, and uh, uh, and how the application works and that sort of thing. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, we're excited to have the first ever Rural Challenge where what we're really looking for is aspiring entrepreneurs, someone who is, is, is in the very early stages of trying to get a business off the ground. And uh, we have, it's, it's a pitch competition. The, the application process is very easy. You know, they basically go through the website and, uh, and you can begin the process, you can log in and begin your application, and then you can stop and come back to it at any point. Uh, the deadline is not until uh, September 15th. So anytime between now and September 15th, you can begin, and then later on you can finish your application. It's uh, just ask for some basic information and then some photos of your business. And um, we will announce the 10 semifinalists. We'll have a panel of judges review all the applications. We'll have 10 semifinalists that will be announced at the Rural Entrepreneurship Summit uh, on October the 14th. Uh, and then we'll narrow the 10 down to the, the top four, which will come to the, to the finals at the American Farm Bureau Convention in uh, San Diego. So at that point, they'll pitch on stage, and a, and a panel of judges will, will pick the best team as the Rural Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, but all four finalist teams will actually get at least $15,000 in prize money to help them as they grow their business. Uh, hopefully that answers some of the questions about it. The uh, website at uh, strongruralamerica.com and uh, specifically the, uh, the section about the Rural Entrepreneurship Challenge has even more info there. Uh, so let's see, do we have, let's look for some other questions we might have here. So we've got a, got a question here about, um, about kind of, you know, why is Farm Bureau and Georgetown working together on this program? And, I, you know, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I think it's one of the most exciting programs out there. Uh, both organizations have found a common interest in really helping the country. And, uh, and we, we believe that entrepreneurship is the most powerful force for driving economic and social good. You know, if people can create value in their own communities, then they can afford to live there and stay and, and, and enjoy the benefits of rural America that April was talking about and, uh, and not have to worry about you know, the, the ability to make a living and do the things they want to do. So I, Dan, I don't know if you want to add anything about kind of the reasons why Farm Bureau is, is involved in this program. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, Jeff. And at the same time, I think that there's real opportunity for us at the American Farm Bureau to look at, you know, we're very proud of the fact that as a program-based, solutions-oriented organization, we're very proud of growing a lot of our own things. We also think that there's 
so much opportunity to kind of jumpstart through an awesome relationship like Georgetown University, who has been doing a lot of things through their Startup Hoyas Challenge, through entrepreneurialism, things like that, that we can take full advantage of and say, hey, we've not invested this way before, but we think that the results that we're getting so far have jumpstarted us so much farther than us trying to create our structure. Why not take full advantage of what's going on and look for a partner that doesn't necessarily just think exactly the same way as us, but will challenge us. And I can tell you, RJ Carney and, and Dr. Lisa Benson would tell you that there are times Georgetown challenges us so much that we think, oh no, what's happening with this? But in the end, the results come out to be the way that we want them to be. And it's just been an awesome partnership and the resources that are happening to be able to pull this together. So I guess that's in a nutshell why we've made the investment that we have and we think that there's great results for us as we continue to move forward. And I'd like to chime in on this too. I know um, I had the same questions of, wow, this is an interest, uh, or the same thought of, wow, this is a really interesting partnership between Georgetown and the American Farm Bureau. And as I, as somebody who's affiliated and associated with both groups, the more I started to think about it, the more I even realized this, this made sense. And how much potential there was through the partnership, it's just as Dan was just saying, to challenge each other and to learn from each other. This is a great platform for uh, the Farm Bureau to be able to communicate to Georgetown and then through Georgetown to the D.C. community about some of the rural issues and the rural challenges that we're facing in rural America today. And then also to take the um, the knowledge that Jeff has and the entrepreneurship experience that Georgetown has, because I can tell you as somebody who's graduated through their program, some of the top entrepreneurs um, and innovative thinkers are coming out of Georgetown right now, that it is such a great partnership to um, bring this, to, to see the two of them working together, because I think they will challenge each other in a partnership that will be unique just to them. April, if I can uh, revise and extend just a second. I, I think that the other piece of this is that when you were talking that really hit me is there is a real opportunity to also show urban businesses particularly that there is real investment opportunities and the relationships that Georgetown does bring to the table from financial institutions, from organizations looking for you know the right social uh, enterprise initiatives and things like that. We're also hoping that through that it will jumpstart our external affairs and relations area to really bring opportunity and show that rural America is a viable part of the overall business society of, of the world. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you, April. Uh, and thank you to our audience out there. We hope we've given you a good overview of what this program promises to do. And, uh, and why we're all excited about it. Uh, if you do end up with any more questions about the program, you know, please do feel free to reach out to us. There's a contact us part of the website that allows you to reach out directly. And, uh, and we're, we really hope that, uh, that you guys are as excited as we are about launching the Rural Entrepreneurship Initiative. So once again, thanks Dan, thanks April, and thanks to our audience. And uh, we hope we'll see all of you on, the, on a future webinar and, uh, and a future Part of the part of the initiative. Thanks, everyone.